Hi everyone and welcome to the last farming forecast of March and indeed the last farming forecast for a while. I'm sorry to say we're going to have to take a short pause on the farming forecast for the next couple of months due to staff shortages unfortunately. We are hoping to be back in summer 2022 however. In the meantime if you're looking for somewhere else to get your forecast I've got a couple of things to show you over the next few slides but if you're just here for the weather then feel free to skip ahead a minute or two. But I thought we'd start by taking a look at our forecast hotline you'll have heard us talk about this a lot in previous videos this is such a useful resource to have you can speak to our forecast forecasters every day from 6 a.m till 5 30 p.m we're able to answer any of your questions detailed forecasts in the short term talking about spraying windows and also long term longer term outlooks as well so there's really a wealth of information to be had by speaking to our forecasters the calls cost one pound 55 a minute plus network access charges and the number to call is 09065 7776 so please feel free to give that a go over the next few months. Another thing that's really useful is our WeatherQuest farming portal. All sorts of information available on this and a really useful resource to uh, make the most of. There's very detailed forecasts available on this. So you can see here there's some probability forecasts, but you also get detailed 10-day forecasts and monthly forecasts available on this as well. And in fact, WQ Radar is also included within this platform. So lots of different information to be had here. If you're after a free two-week trial, then just get in touch with us at info at weatherquest.co. UK. But if it's WQ Radar that you're interested in and you think the portal's a bit too much for you at the moment, then I have some good news for you. We're offering WQ Radar with a discount code at the moment. The discount code is SPRING and that will get you a year's subscription at almost half price for £25 per year. Just head to wqradar.co.uk. All sorts of information available on WQ Radar. You can see the latest radar, weather observations and you can also get lightning alerts. So it's a really useful tool, particularly if you're out in the field. So I hope some of those things will be useful to you over the next couple of months until we return on the farming forecast. But for now, let's get on with the video. I thought we could start by taking a look back over March and the month that we've had so far as we're nearly at the end of things now. And for many places, it's been kind of a sort of settled month. We have had some spells of rain at times. There have been periods of wet weather, but for a lot of the time, we have had high pressure close to, if not overhead, and particularly into the second part of the month. Just looking at the radar estimated rainfall accumulations and the pattern for the month as a whole you can see generally the greatest rainfall totals those purple colors here were in western areas whereas the further east you go they generally get lower now taking a look at the rainfall anomaly so how much rainfall fell compared to average you can see widely across the map here those brown colors indicating most places were drier than average for the month particularly with high pressure dominating particularly over the last two weeks of the month as well you can see some exceptions to this some white areas indeed some blue patches here and particularly this area in central parts of southern England we had a rather wet afternoon on the 16th of March some quite persistent spells of rain there so many places um, seeing quite a lot of their monthly rainfall just on one day there so some places close to or above average but the general story for the month as a whole as a whole is drier than average now let's take a more detailed look at the forecast the weather for the coming few days starting with Wednesday and I think on Wednesday morning we're expecting a frost in some northwestern areas areas at first so perhaps a touch of frost in places while southern areas will generally start on the cloudier side of things perhaps some mist and fog around in places now the story as we go through Wednesday we've got this front here this cold front not looking like much as it's over Scotland initially but that will gradually spread southwards as we go through the day generally sort of light and patchy rain but the potential for some sleet and snow mixed in there generally that's most likely over high ground this perhaps overdoing it slightly to the extent of the sleet and the snow in places I think any sleet or snow is most likely over high ground of uh, northwest England parts of Wales these kind of areas as we go through the day on Wednesday and for many places it will generally be quite light and patchy rain and further uh, north we're generally introducing a colder feel to the weather and some wintry showers here as well now we're keeping our eyes peeled on Wednesday night and into Thursday morning and this cold front and what it does next the potential is there for it to sort of uh, invigorate slightly turn a little bit heavier and with that the potential is there for some evaporative cooling to take place potentially leading to some slightly more widespread sleet or snow as we go into the overnight period so for sort of central parts and maybe southeastern parts of England that is a possibility but 
very much sort of a lot of uncertainty still at the moment, um, as always is with these snow forecasting events. So definitely one to keep around for, but for many places, I do imagine it will just end up as rain um, for most places. But we're keeping an eye on that as we go into Thursday morning for sure. But apart from those areas here in the southeast, for many places, Thursday will be a bright start to the day, quite a frosty, cold start for many places. This cold front will gradually slip away to the south as we go through the day. And the general pattern for the day is going to be bright and breezy with wintry showers. These will be most frequent around the east coast um, where the breezes will also feel coolest as well. Now, we've talked about it feeling colder as we go into Thursday. Let's just take a look at the air mass temperatures. So you can see over us at the beginning of the day on Wednesday these yellowy green colours here so indicating a fairly mild air mass and indeed it has been quite mild over the last week but we can see these blue colours waiting in the wings and as that cold front moves its way southwards as we go through Wednesday and into Thursday those blue colours becoming quite extensive across the map so it will begin to feel colder as we go towards the latter part of the week. Now looking towards Friday, we have high pressure built out to the northwest um, and a bit of a sort of north to northeasterly flow at the beginning of the day. So the potential for some wintry showers, another frosty start for many places, I should say as well. Um, so we'll see some wintry showers. It will be another breezy day for many places. As the day progresses, that high pressure moves uh, southwards. We will see the flow turn a bit more north to northwesterly. So perhaps um, some wintry showers spreading into northwestern areas as well as we go through the day on Friday. Now looking into Saturday, high pressure now centred to the southwest, so that draws us into more of a northwesterly flow as we go through the day on Saturday. So after another frosty start, wintry showers um, perhaps more sort of uh, frequent across northwestern facing coastlines than previous days, perhaps merging to a few longer spells of rain, sleet or snow in places. But the general idea of a cold uh, feel over the next few days and some wintry showers in places too. Just looking towards the end of Saturday, keeping an eye on this area of low pressure that develops towards the end of the day. Some models have it a little bit further east, so could be pushing some longer spells of rain into western parts of Ireland to end the day. Now, if you're looking to do some spraying over the next few days, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. We'll go through and we can see these green colours indicating ideal spraying conditions, but they're going to be difficult to nail down. Obviously, with that cold front spreading areas of rain, sleet and snow southwards, that's not good for spraying. But over the next few days, as we get more of a sort of showery pattern developing, where winds stay lighter and where those showers don't make it quite as far inland, there will be some decent spraying conditions in places. Initially, probably most likely uh, in the sort of... Uh, south and west where the winds will be lightest and the showers will be less frequent but as we go towards Saturday and the flow becomes northwesterly and also a touch slacker um, then we will see some spraying conditions some ideal spraying conditions becoming widespread so difficult to nail down exactly where those good spraying conditions will be but I'm sure they'll be somewhere in there over the next few days. So we did mention it is going to feel colder as we go through the next few days. And I thought we'd just take a look at the max and min temperature trend over the next 10 days as it illustrates it so beautifully. Um, so we can see as we go towards Thursday, Friday, that cold front moves through. We see the maximum temperatures dropping here. Um, so into the single figures, it will begin to feel much cooler, especially with those chilly breezes as we go through into Thursday and Friday kind of time. So feeling cooler, maximum temperatures in the single figures. And also with that, bringing the risk of some colder nights as well. And you can see uh, these dropping below that line. That line there is zero degrees, so below freezing. So the risk of some very frosty mornings um, over Thursday, Friday, and indeed into the weekend as well. These are for Leicester. But then as we go further ahead, as we go into the first part next week, you can see the um, bars sort of picking up indeed above freezing just a, a tiny bit below freezing there so perhaps a few ensemble members going for a frosty morning on Monday but for many places those bars are picking up as we go into the early part of next week and that more sort of northwesterly flow brings us slightly milder conditions. Speaking of the northwesterly flow, we'll take a look into the early part of next week for the forecast. So we've got high pressure hanging around to the southwest here, low pressure to the northeast, and that is setting up a northwesterly flow as we go through into the early part of next week. And that is expected to continue into the first few days of next week. So generally, the pattern that we're expecting is showers, maybe a few longer spells of rain, most frequent near northwestern facing coastlines, where the further south and east you go, generally the drier it will be. 
Now for the week as a whole, we are expecting it to be quite unsettled, quite changeable, and that's indicated here by week two of our monthly forecast with these blue colours indicating lower than average pressure. So a lower than average pressure anomaly for many places. So an unsettled week is expected. I think the flow may turn more westerly into the second part of the week. Um, so areas of low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, spreading eastwards. And there will be some drier interludes occasionally, perhaps some brief ridges of high pressure in there, but generally an unsettled week indeed for much of northern Europe. Now looking elsewhere in the continent uh, to the south, we finally see these pink colours returning to the map here, where in previous weeks we've had a cut off low quite persistently across parts of Iberia, bringing quite unsettled conditions. So starting to return to something a bit more normal with these pink colours here indicating higher than average pressure. So things starting to settle down over here. Taking a look at the precipitation anomaly then, this is kind of what we would expect, these green colours here indicating wetter than average conditions where low pressure systems are tracking. Um, you can see here in the UK, the strongest green colours, the brightest greens are in northwestern areas, so that's where we're expecting to see the most rain, whereas you go further south and the colours closer to sort of white, closer to normal for many places there. And obviously the thing that does stand out about this map is parts of central Europe. You can see the darkest green colours over here as areas of low pressure pressure track towards Central Europe and over across in Southern Europe you can see those brown colours returning for many places so indicating a drier than average week for those areas. Looking at temperatures as well as we go into week two, the cold temperatures of the next week or so will gradually move away out to the west as that more westerly flow comes in, driving um, some sort of relatively mild air in from the west. And you can see the colours here in Western Europe returning closer to white, those normal close to normal temperatures, if not slightly above average with those light pink shades there. So potentially uh, temperatures picking up a little bit as we go towards the end of week two. Now looking towards week three, not much change in the overall pattern, generally expected to stay unsettled. Those blue colours there indicating low pressure still in charge of our condition, maybe tracking slightly further south as we go into week three, but still looking unsettled and changeable for many places. And in terms of temperatures, that westerly flow really set to continue as we go into week three, and that continues to spread more sort of slightly above average temperatures in from the west for many places. You can see those pink colours becoming much more more widespread across the continent with those blue colours there really being confined to Scandinavia and the northeast of the continent. Now looking towards week four, the signals are a lot weaker, particularly at this time of year. It's always very difficult um, to get any sort of strong signals out of the monthly forecast. What I would say is that as we go into week four, still expected to be kind of unsettled, kind of changeable, low confidence at this stage, obviously, but the potential for uh, low pressure systems to continue to move in from the west with those blue colours there indicating lower than average pressure. And looking at temperatures as well, not too much change from the previous week um, with that predominantly westerly flow continuing. We're still looking to see above average temperatures across much of the continent while those blue colours just begin to retreat uh, to the northeast over there. So to summarise, a uh, cold front spreading southwards over the next few days, bringing a risk of some sleet or snow, but mostly to higher ground areas, but also introducing a colder field to our weather. So the potential for some frosty mornings returning for many places. And over the next, uh, for the following few days, Thursday, Friday, kind of onwards, it's going to be quite chilly, quite bright and breezy with wintry showers, initially most frequent near sort of eastern facing coastlines, but as that flow turns more around to the northwest, starting to become more frequent in the northwest as well. And the following week looks to be a more mobile unsettled pattern, the flow from the northwest or the west um, for most of the time and temperatures gradually returning closer to average. So thanks a lot for joining us for our last WeatherQuest farming forecast uh, of the spring. We hope to be back in the summer. In the meantime, please do get in touch with us on social media. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much and goodbye.